Hey guys, I really hope your July has been calm and relaxing and you've got over the stress of exams and the stress of exam results isn't too dramatic for you because my July was quite dramatic and quite traumatic and I'm sure there are lots of other big words I can use to describe my July but it was a lot happened in July like a lot happened in July so I just want to reassure everyone that everyone is home everyone is healthy everyone is fine it's not gonna be like a uh, dramatic twist at the end of this video um baby's fine okay it's fine now um but yeah i had a baby yay um he's ridiculously cute like ridiculously cute so um start at the beginning of the story shall we um i had a baby yes um, I had an elective cesarean section this time because last time um, I tried to give birth naturally and it really, really, really didn't work. Like, basically loads of things went wrong. It was like 40 hours long. It was really, really traumatic. Ended up in emergency surgery with like my husband thinking that I was about to die. There was like blood squirting everywhere. It was really dramatic so everyone keeps asking me to do kind of like a, a video like what is it really like to give birth and the reason I haven't done it beforehand is because the answer previously was really 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 traumatic and horrible um however this time it was so lovely um so we knew the date it was going to be we knew the time it was going to be kind of like um the day before we dropped our toddler over at my parents <laughs> we went out on a date we had steak and like my neck had cocktails and loads of ice cream so it's a really, really lovely evening the night before because we don't get to go out very often um like we're on a really really nice day got all dressed up fancy stayed out late again not something you can do very often when you have kids i went into hospital the next morning um we were the first people in the queue um to have the surgery and it was just a really, really lovely, lovely experience. So you have um, a spinal block, which they put um, um, anaesthetic in your spine, like quite high up. So you can't actually feel anything from kind of like the, the bottom of your ribs downwards. Because obviously the baby takes up quite a lot of space. I mean, you remember the pictures of how massively large I was. Baby takes up quite a lot of space. Um... And the whole atmosphere was really chilled, it was really lovely, it was really calm. My husband and I were holding hands, we were like laughing and joking the entire time. It was honestly one of the best experiences of my whole entire life. It was absolutely amazing. Um, and the really weird thing with um, having an Alexis cesarean is because last time I was so, so heavily drugged up. I wasn't really aware of what was going on. But this time, because like I'd only had one... Um, the spinal block to stop the pain. I was like fully aware of what was going on and it's really weird because you can feel um, the hands and you can feel them moving stuff around but it doesn't hurt. So kind of like when they cut, obviously they have to cut you to get the baby out. Um, and then you can like feel them doing stuff inside you. I know this is going to freak some of you out it, it, and it is. It's really really freaky but it doesn't hurt at all like we were laughing and joking and everyone was chatting like the entire time it was such such a lovely experience like i can't thank hospital staff surgical staff enough for just making it so wonderful honestly it's gonna be like one of the best experiences of my whole entire life um which is you know what having a baby should be like um and then when it came time to get the baby out because it took them quite a long time um because of um, problems with my last surgery because of the problems I had with the endometriosis. Um, my internal organs had decided to fuse together. Not what they're supposed to do. <laughs> Naughty little internal organs. Um, so they had to do kind of a lot of, lot of stitching, quite a lot of repairing before they even got the baby out. There were quite a lot of holes all over the place that they had to sew back up again. Um, so then time came to get the baby out. Um, and I could feel them like pushing, like here so like I could feel pressure here like just under my just under my boobs pushing and I could feel them pulling at the other end and you could hear like 
them straining a little bit like they were really really struggling to get the baby out and like they cut the hole and they're just really really struggling to pull the baby out and then when he finally came out it was apparent why they were struggling because I had a giant baby now if you remember the size of my bump it would not come as a surprise that I had a giant baby and he was 11 pounds 3 ounces um, now, normal babies are like five, six, seven pounds. So I basically had two normal babies. So all those people that go, ha, 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 are you sure you're not having twins? No, just one baby that was the size of twins. Um, he was a giant baby, so no wonder I was a massive and be exhausted the entire time because I was carrying a giant baby around. Um, he was big. He was like really, really big. Um, if you can imagine like a bag of sugar, and like five bags of sugar and then to get some gaffer tape and tape those to your stomach and then walk around like that for a couple of months that's what it was like being pregnant with a giant baby um everything hurt and i was exhausted the entire time so yeah fantastic experience giving birth baby was out um ridiculously cute um, there were a few complications with the surgery, so I had to have like a drain put in, which is basically a long thin tube connected to a bag which filled up with blood. It was a bit gross. Um, so I had to stay in hospital for a few days. But the staff in the hospital were absolutely fantastic. Um, the midwives were kind of like, just press the button and we'll come and feed the baby and change the baby for you. Why just lay there going, somebody do this for me, somebody do this for me. Um, but honestly it did hurt quite a lot afterwards because they make you get out of bed like really soon. I mean they cut all of my abdominal muscles, just like cut them, and then the next day it's kind of like, get out of bed. And you're like, <laughs> don't make me. I mean literally, walking down the corridor to go to the toilets had me like in a floods of tears. That's what I was a bit worried, it might have been a little bit dramatic. It might have been a little bit over dramatic. Maybe a little bit of a drama queen going on. Anyway, um, got recovered, got from that, came home, had two lovely, lovely weeks with the baby, um, and then he got a bit sick. Um, and you know when you're like, you're sick, you can go and tell somebody or tell your parents, like, I don't feel very well, I've got this, 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 and this, and this. Well, the problem with, like, tiny, tiny baby, not tiny babies, giant babies like I had, but young babies, is that pretty much all they do is sleep, eat, and we and poo. Um, so to say that they're acting weird is is kind of hard because, well, they don't do enough stuff to act weird. Um, but he started acting a bit weird. Um, basically, just like not eating and not pooing. Um, there was a bit of wee, but and he's such a chill out baby. But he just screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed and screamed. And not like the normal baby crying, like proper high-pitched I'm really really in pain screaming here so like two weeks old this is my husband's just about to go out to work after paternity day and he is proper screaming like really really in pain high-pitched screaming not like normal baby crying this is proper proper screaming so acting a bit weird so we call like 111 and we explain what's going on and kind of like you know you can sense a change in people's conversation from this is normal to this is quite serious, we need to be taking this quite seriously. You just can't sense a change and kind of like, oh god, maybe something is like properly wrong. Um, and then the doctor called us back really, really quickly and said, you need to rush this baby straight to a &E. So my husband gets in the car, rushes the baby to a &E. I can't drive because I've chances there is actually not got a toddler to look after, so it's me kind of like on the phone, what's going on, what the doctor's saying, trying to like contain the toddler, trying to like do this, this, this. It was manic. It was like so crazy manic. I was going to my parents, come back for holiday, um, to look after the toddler so I could go into hospital. And um, we get there and it's got an infection. Now we don't know what type of infection, but they're testing for meningitis, which in a baby is really serious. So he had to have loads of needles stuck in him, like all over the place. It was horrific. Now, I don't know if you've ever had to have like blood taken or had like a cannula put in. Um, but for me, it's pretty easy because I'm really, really pale and my veins stick out like 
all over the place like they're so easy to find available on me for people to take blood and um, it's not that easy on a two week old baby like it was oh my god I can't even think about it without kind of like getting goosebumps it was it was quite traumatic because I'm trying to find a vein so it took three doctors uh, maybe like 40 minutes to find a vein and then they had to go and do a lumbar puncture oh my god I could like Oh, I can feel my skin going all like, oh. So a lumbar puncture, they have to put a needle into the spine to get some spinal fluid out to test for meningitis. Um, and like they wouldn't let us be in the room because it was it was going to be a really quite traumatic thing. And he was in the room next door, and I could hear the screaming. And oh my god, it was. Oh, I just. Oh, I can't even think about it now. It was so... There was a lot of screaming going on. Um, but anyway, the staff in A&E, again, absolutely fantastic. Because he was so young, he couldn't, like, sit with all the other people because he hadn't had any vaccinations yet. Um, so we were basically in a private room um, for about six, seven, eight hours while they did loads of tests, while they tried to get him to respond to things. Um... And then they said that he had to be admitted to hospital um, for antibiotics. Um, but again, because he was so tiny, he couldn't go on the general ward. He had to be in a private room. Um, so they managed to find us a private room, um, put him on loads of antibiotics. Well, one antibiotic, lots of it. Um, and the cannula in the back of his hand, he got little, like, teeny tiny little baby hands, literally about this big with needles in and plasters in and splinting and all covered up with bandages kind of like having a massive like a boxing glove on your hand but he doesn't really understand what's going on because he's only two weeks old he kept like trying to eat his hand and it wasn't there anymore and oh my lord it's slightly traumatic it was very traumatic the whole thing was very traumatic um so then we had to stay on the ward i had to stay on the ward for about three four days um, and again, I'm going to say this so many times, staff were absolutely fantastic. All the doctors, all the nurses, everyone was absolutely amazing. Um, and he got better. And then let's go home after, I can't even remember, three or four days. It's a combination of, you know, not being at work, having a new baby, being stuck in a small white walled room for four days on the end. Um, just like time has lost all meaning for me at the moment. I've got no idea what's going on, like at all. So after, I can't remember, three or four days, we were allowed home and like the community nurses were going to come and give him his antibiotics because he was fine by this point. He was like a normal baby. And then the cannula fell out. So I had to try and find another one and it was like in his hands, in his feet and like his feet were really bruised and there was screaming going on and oh, again, it was slightly traumatic. I think maybe it was a bit more traumatic for me because I'm going to remember it, whereas he... I won't remember it because he was so little just like I was just sitting there with tears streaming down my face it was just like it was quite traumatic <laughs> or it was like that a few times um, but they couldn't get one in his hands and they couldn't get one in his feet and it turns out the infection they had was um, resistant to loads of different antibiotics so they could only give him like there's a choice of two antibiotics and um, we chose the safer one because the other one um, came with a chance of deafness. I didn't really want to have to explain to him when he was like older that the reason he went deaf was because I couldn't be bothered to get out of bed to take him to hospital. So we went for the safer one which didn't cause deafness but we had to go into hospital lots and lots. Um, I'm waffling now, I can tell I'm waffling what I'm saying. Yes, they couldn't find a vein in his hands or in his feet and they were like really swollen and really bruised and there was so much screaming and this was like hours of trying. So they had to put it in his head. I know, I know, it's, they had to put a needle in his head. Yeah, so then they had to put a needle in his head and he had to have like a little cap on to um prevent him from knocking it out with a needle in his head i both fell out there to do this twice um but it meant we had to stay back in hospital so i was back in hospital for another four days so it was it's been quite a traumatic july i spent a lot of july in hospital seeing a lot of doctors oh and then i had to go in a to e and a and e myself as well because i was losing a lot of blood 
there was like it was there was like a lot of blood pouring out. It was not good. Apparently it's not supposed to happen after any. Anyway, I had to go to any, baby had to go to any, I had to have surgery, everyone's fine now. But it's been quite traumatic. So I hope your July was less traumatic than my July. Um I just want to say massive, massive thank you to all the staff at the hospital who were just absolutely fantastic. Like from the people we saw before the C-section, to the surgeons, to the midwives, to the porters, to the um, assistants, the, the cleaners, to when we went into A&E, the receptionists, the, the junior doctors, the registrars, the consultants, the staff on the children's ward, everyone was uh, like absolutely fantastic. So I'm, I can't say enough good things about them, they were all absolutely fantastic. Um, but yeah, that's my July. Bye guys.